Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Sabarant Rocket. This is a video to show you how to install this NVMe SSD drive with ease. These drives are really easy to install, and the setup process is fairly straightforward. And on separate videos on Western Digital, Samsung, and Seagate, and showed the installation process for those, and now I'm showing off the Sabarant Rocket, and that's a similar setup process, really easy. And these drives are fantastic for a number of reasons. Not only is it basically a plug and play affair, but it also requires no power. So you don't have to worry about any power cables, which means your machine's nice and neat. They're also incredibly fast and pretty easy on the eye. Now it is worth noting before I get started that you do need an M2 screw. These are usually included with your motherboard, but if you haven't got one, then you can buy them separately. And I'll add links in the description where you can see you can purchase them and they're fairly easy to get hold of and quite cheap too. Basically it's a little screw that screws down and keeps the drive in place and you do need it so it's worth making sure what you have one. The drive itself does not come with one so it's worth noting that immediately. The other thing to bear in mind is that you need to make sure before you purchase that your motherboard will support NVMe drive. Most modern motherboards have at least one slot on them for NVMe drives. This MSI Z490 Ace has slots for three. And you can also buy expander cards, and I'll talk to you a bit later on about that. But this one will support Gen 3. You also have AMD boards that will support Gen 4. But you can see them here tucked away behind the M2 shields, and that's a heat shield that basically dissipates the heat and keeps the drive running cool. For the setup process here, you'll see that I've obviously got the motherboard fresh out of the box, and I'm going to install it before I even go to put the motherboard inside the PC. It is possible, however, to install a drive once it's all set up inside your PC, and it's a fairly easy process as well. Just make sure it's not turned on, obviously, and use an anti-static mat or a wrist strap to make sure you don't accidentally fry all your board and ruin things. And you can see the shields here, a close-up view of them. Basically, you're just going to need to remove one of those shields. I'd recommend starting with the top one. That usually has the best support on it and it makes the process nice and easy. In this case, I've already installed a WD Black SN750 up there though, so I'm gonna install the Sabrant and the second slot. And it's really nice to be able to have three slots here. You usually can get NVMEs up to two terabytes, so basically you could have six terabytes of storage straight on your motherboard without having to worry about other hard drives or standard 2.5 inch SSD drives. And you've got one for Windows and one for games and all that other goodness, whatever else you might choose to install. I'll use mine for videos, for example. Right, now, the setup process, again, easy. Take it out of the box, and as I said, make sure you're using an anti-static mat. I'm actually kneeling on one right now. Make sure you dissipate the static electricity and don't risk frying anything. And then you just need to go about unscrewing the shield. You'll note in a second that the shield underneath also has a housing on it, a protective housing that helps dissipate the heat. Once you're on there you can see the M2 slot. You'll also note there are three basic screw points and that's because M2 drives sometimes come in different sizes. This is a pretty traditional standard size. You can see it's the same size as the WD Black one. Now usually once you've taken that housing off you'll find there's a hole there that you need to screw it down into and I'll show you the screw and the process for that a little bit later on but with this particular motherboard the heat shield itself has the screw built into it so it's basically just a case of clipping it down into place and then screwing it down and I'll show you a close-up again of this in a second but basically the heat shield itself is the screw in this instance and that's fairly unusual usually you need a separate screw to then screw it down one thing of note is the WD Black SN750 above. You can see that I had to remove the heat shield because that drive comes with its own heat shield and protective shielding, which then means that it's too fat to then put the standard motherboard heat shielding down on top of. So that's the advantage of Sabrent is that you can hide it behind the standard heat shielding from your motherboard supplier. And it looks a bit swisher. Now, a close-up view and you'll see what I mean. So this is the heat shield itself and you can see the backing on there and you can see that screw on the end. So the M2 screw is built into it in this instance. So you just need to peel that backing off before you 
set it down and then we set it down on top of the drive once the drive is installed and then that protects the drive and keeps everything running nice and cool. Now at another angle and you can see the Sabrent drive again. Basically this connector at the front and you can easily make sure you get this the right way up. Obviously the label faces upwards and then this slides into that slot and just clicks in. It doesn't need much force. You can hear the little click when it goes in. And then you'll note on the left hand side the hole where that screw goes in. Don't worry, I'm going to show you what that screw looks like if your motherboard isn't the same as mine so you don't have the heat shield that then allows you to screw it down. And if you're curious, you can check out my other videos on the WD Black, for example, and the latest one on the Seagate, which will show you. But the process is basically plug it in and screw it down. And in a minute, once we boot up into Windows, you need to then go into your Windows settings to be able to set it up. You don't need any special software in order to get these running. That's the other fantastic thing about it. They're usually automatically recognized by Windows. Now here, just to demonstrate again a different purpose, this is with the Seagate Fire CUDA, so it's slightly different, but this is an expansion card that basically allows you to plug in a NVMe drive to your motherboard using a PCIe X4 slot. So this is a, basically a way of putting more storage in. You can see the process very similar. Basically pop the drive in. Obviously this isn't the Sabrent, but for demonstration purposes it shows you the process. And you can see the tiny little screw there and then that just screws down in the end. This expansion card is another way of installing NVMe SSD drives and potentially one to get an extra one in there if you want to have four, for example. You can also buy much larger X16 cards that support multiples. I've got one that has four drives in it, so that's fantastic. And then that just plugs in simply. Now, when you're in Windows, if you open up your Explorer and basically go to this PC and then click to manage so you want to click on manage and then that opens up the disk management tool and you can see here under the storage hopefully if you've done it correctly you'll see a little pop-up that basically recognizes that drive exists and suggests that you should format it you can see it here black instead of blue and what you need to do basically is to create a new simple volume so we're going to format it and we're going to give it a drive letter and once you've done that it will then be recognized by windows and you'll be able to use it in a standard way in this instance obviously i'm just demonstrating it with the seagate farcuda but it's the same with the sabrant drive and you click to format it and then it, you can see it's blue now and it will appear in the explorer and you can just drop files in it and use it as you normally would hope you found this video useful let me know in the comments if you've got any questions thanks for watching this has been the provoke crawl thanks for taking the time to watch this video hope you found it useful interesting hilarious or all of the above be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that i think might be useful to you and have a great life.